if we look at it from Everton's point of view, Keith actually does sort of the, the lesser points deduction for Forrest prove actually that Everton should have been less sort of less feisty going into that first time round. Or actually, do you still think it was totally fair for Everton to stand up as the first club that got punished and and fought for what they they thought was fair? Yeah, look, it seems that the way that different decisions have, have been have come about and the final conclusions they've come to have been different in each case, and that's what's so difficult to understand. And therefore, you just really don't know uh, what the right approach would have been. Everton, in the end, decided to plead guilty. So they did cooperate on, on that basis. Uh, up until then, they'd also, as I understand it, very helpful very helpful with the Premier League in terms of access to uh, the material, etc. And there'd been no sign that this was even going to be near a 10-point penalty. And what we're really talking about is that, you know, that 10 points got reduced to six. Really, it should have been six points at the start, not 10. And therefore, any Everton appeal should have been against six points. And that's really where we're, we're coming to now. And uh, the whole process is just, you know, I'm, I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people saying that the Premier League have lost a lot of uh, credibility over this whole issue. Do you think Everton did pay the price from the Premier League's point of view? Maybe it was because it was they were the, it was the first time round, but did they actually pay the pri- price for supplying the incorrect information? I mean, that's what some fans have argued. Well, they've said, yes. I mean, the words, I think, have been reduced to objectively misleading. But the thing is, with different independent commissions hearing each case, the members of the panels are taking different views on what actually happened. And that's also adding to the confusion because people have got different views on whether that was misleading or not. And so until you have a standardization and you know a, a way to sort of justify and to check what's really gone on, then it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to say that each case has been handled exactly the same. And is it also fair for Evertonians to feel angry that effectively Forrest argued in that case, I know you read through it, that they gained a, Everton gained a sporting advantage from their FFP breach? Do you think Forrest effectively during their process were trying to give a favourable punishment? Not to say they were trying to belittle Everton necessarily, but of course they were trying to, well, scrap for Premier League survival. Well, it's interesting, again, the wordings that's coming up. I mean, they're saying that Basically, that what the, both commissions are arguing is that if you breached, then you've got you spent extra money, then therefore you must have gained a sporting advantage. I find it very hard to see how Everton did gain a sporting advantage, and we've seen Forrest as well. Potentially, the, the, the argument came down to four games where uh, the player that was eventually sold played in those four games, and they claim there was a sporting advantage there. I'd hardly say that is a major you know, world-changing sporting advantage. And in both these cases, we've got clubs that were at the lower end of the table, not in great form, losing games. And, you know, it's it's difficult to see how that can be justified. But, you know, it's hard to argue to say, well, look, they overspent, so therefore they must have gained a sporting advantage. I don't know. Did they waste money? Were there injuries? Were there different things? It's, it's hard to say. And, uh, again, this is such a subjective view that's taken uh, it's it's very difficult to see. Considering that Forrest got those two extra points of being compliant, do you think that is the case then? Would that be fair to say that Everton will now take a, a hands-off approach, if you'd like to call it that? Well, certainly if I was chief executive there just now, I'd be telling my KC to go for the jugular, to put his foot on their throat and to proceed at 100 miles an hour and go for them. Because as each commission's rulings have come out, we're finding more and more that Everton have got more to argue now and to, to, uh, to positively look on their side. And so I would be saying, no, don't don't take your foot off this. Go fully for them, because it's it's such a mess they've got themselves into that you've really got to go for it. Is there not a worry, though, that if you were to do that, say, that actually the Premier League would just turn around and do what they've already done and issue more points because you haven't been responsive? Or do you actually believe that putting forward a stronger argument with with effectively more points in your case would mean that they have not, they, they have no legs to stand on effectively? Correct. I think they have got very, you know, got no legs to stand on right now because such conflicting points are coming through time and time again. And as I mentioned, that different members of the panels will take conflicting views on different issues. I think now Everton's mitigating issues around the Ukraine war. I think some of the new panel may see that in a different light now because I still find it so hard to believe that that was supposed to be considered a day-to-day occurrence. And yet the Ukraine war is uh, not quite, to me, a day-to-day occurrence. Uh, and so it's it, it's hopeful that you know they will find a way because to try and accept a, a lesser penalty on Everton. Certainly, the double jeopardy argument is very clear, and 
it's going to be a very minor breach in, in if there is one you know of of course but i think that the premier league i think would be anxious to try and put a cap on both these cases and get the season finished and i don't think they're going to um go too hard i'm hoping well my guess at the moment from all i've been reading on the legal commission uh, reports and i've been rereading them again i think we might be looking at something like two points so that then takes your total up to eight Correct, which I still think is wrong because it should have been down to there should have been the appeal on six points rather than ten, which would have brought us down to four, and so the next two would have brought us to six, and that's where I think it should have ended up. Um, but we'll wait and see. Hopefully, I'm wrong. There's a suspended sentence of some type. Uh, we'll wait and see. But they seem very insistent on making it a points deduction for a breach of this particular rule. Uh, but the double jeopardy is is a pretty serious one that, that they they can't really overlook that at all. So if it does go to two points, takes you to eight, are you expecting Everton to then appeal that? And would it go back to six? Would it be reduced further? How, how would that then work? Well, again, we'd have to look at the uh, the ruling on how they came to their decision. They, As I say, they've now got themselves into a bit of a corner with different ways of calculated things. So again, we'd have to wait and see what the judgment says and how it looks. There could well be another appeal uh, and we'll see how that goes. But yes, I think that there's every chance it could be. Certainly, as I mentioned, I'd be on the attack and I'd be wanting to embarrass the Premier League. I think the legal brains have got this completely wrong. They've obviously never run a football club. Uh, they're not, they don't realise how you budget for a season and when you have to budget for a season and the sort of things that you budget for revenue streams. And they get these all wrong. And it's just people that don't understand football in that sense and are making judgments that are dictating to football what's really happening in the table. It's really, really wrong. Are you glad in any way, Keith, if we take try and try and take a positive spin potentially that actually it's happening now rather than later? Because, of course, as we've discussed in previous weeks, there was always that sort of cloud hanging over Everton, wondering when it was finally going to happen. Is there some relief that actually now the hopefully the wheels start to get rolling on this and, and you can progress? Well, no, because it's such a diversion. It's such a waste of time, resources, effort, emotional time with, with stuff. But we've got a new stadium they're trying to build and, you know, they should be getting on with that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of issues around that particular stadium just now. I know some suppliers today went into administration. Uh, there's some different, you know, some big issues there. And uh, there's enough to run in a football club without having to be completely sidetracked on these issues. So, of course, it's good to see it coming towards an end, but we're not there yet. And there's a lot to go. And there's only 10 games left. Uh, and we should be focusing, you know, 100% on those 10 games. Do you think it will have any bearing on whether Everton are in the Premier League or the Championship next year? Or actually, do you think that two points is kind of by the by? No, I think it's going to be crucial. I think it's going to be very tight down there for that uh, third relegation place. Uh, I think whether, you know, Luton, I've got a lot to say in there as well as Everton and, of course, Forest now. Uh, I think, you know, it's going to be very tight. And I think everybody's going to be trying to pull everything they can. Two points is going to be a big thing. And I think even goal difference might be a key factor this year. So we've got to be very careful on uh, on how things move forward. And certainly Forrest and Everton have got to play each other. And uh, there's some big games coming up.